ratio and the loss of the near post credit scene and see what this is all about and check this out. If you think I'm evil, well, this way. So today, I have a little post credit scene theory for Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Let's talk about it. So the marketing campaign for Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania is in full effect. It feels like Marvel has released a thousand different posters within the last couple of days. Now, Kevin Feige is continuing to come out and make some more statements through the Empire Magazine issue. And tickets are now on sale. I already caught tickets for every single day for the first month that this movie is out, and I'm ready to start a phase five with a bang. Now, with all of the marketing that has been out, Marvel is making it no secret that Kanga Conquer is fine here. It feels like this movie should have been titled Kanga Conquer Quantumania because Kang is the main man that everyone wants to see, and he has been the central figure that Marvel has been using to market this movie, and that's a very smart move because at the end of the day, you know, I feel like the majority of, of fans, the majority of the general audience, is more excited to see Jonathan Majors come in and freaking curse stomp Ant-Man <laughs> than uh, anything else. Because we know Kang is the next big bad in the MCU and everything is going to be building towards him. So like I said, I fully expect Kang to come in and red shop and make a statement with this movie. You know, in the opening scene for Avengers Infinity War, Marvel literally designed that scene to make a statement that Thanos is finally here and he's not playing games. Boom, kills Loki. Boom, sauces up the Hulk in a 1v1. Boom, already beat Thor's ass off screen. Boom, kills Heimdall. They were not freaking holding back. So now, this movie is Kang's opening scene. This is it. This is where Kang's about to make a statement. You know, with the Loki series, we were, we were introduced to He Who Remains, and even him, he was warning us about Kang. So He Who Remains gave us the warning, and now it's finally time for Kang to shine. So we all fully expect Kang to win in this movie. And let me remind you that this Kang that we're seeing in Quantumania, this is a Kang who's already killed the Avengers. He's already killed people like Tony Stark, Steve Rogers, Thor, the original Avengers. This is a Kang who's already killed, you know, some of our favorite MCU characters. So when he comes up against someone like Ant-Man, he should be able to walk right through him. Another thing, too, is that Kang is smarter than Scott Lang. You know what I'm saying? Kang is from the future. You know, there, there shouldn't be a scenario where he gets outsmarted by someone like Scott Lang. You know what I'm saying? He's got the brains, and he's got the bronze, and he should be able to win in this movie. Now, Kevin Feige recently revealed to Empire Magazine that Kang's main goal in this movie is to escape the quantum realm using his time chair that he's going to need Scott Lang's help to fix. Marvel also recently released a new TV spot announcing that tickets are on sale, and in this TV spot, we're getting new pieces of dialogue from Kang, describing the Quantum Realm as a cage, and now it's time for the man to be released. So what if this movie has a cliffhanger ending where Kang beats Ant-Man, he beats the Ant Fem, and he escapes the Quantum Realm using his time chair, and we don't really know where he goes, he just escapes the Quantum Realm, and now the Ant-Man family is stuck and stranded in the Quantum Realm, and that's how this movie ends. Quit screwing around. You told me yourself not to screw around. Hank! Oh! Janet! Guys! Guys! All hope has been lost for the Ant-Man family, and we roll to the credits kind of in a similar way that we did in Infinity War, whereas the Infinity War ended with Thanos winning, and there was not really any hope for anything else until that post credit scene where we saw that page of Captain Marvel's logo notifying us that she's on the way. Well, now, I think this movie could potentially end with a cliffhanger ending where all hope is lost, Kang wins, there's no hope for the Ant fam, but then we have a post credit scene that gives us hope. So what if in this post credit scene we cut to an Ant-Man family that is completely defeated, all hope is lost, and they've kind of accepted that this is where they're going to live out the rest of their lives because they have no hope of getting out until they're approached by four hooded figures. And at this point, they're just silhouettes. We can't really make out, you know, who they are exactly. But then they walk into the light, take off their hoods, and it's the Fantastic Four, and this is the introduction to the Fantastic Four in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Now look, do I think this is likely to happen? No. 
But with all great things, there must come a certain level of risk, there must come a certain level of doubt, and at this point in time, we don't even know if Marvel's ca even cast the Fantastic Four yet. We know that they've been in the casting process for a while, but we don't know if Marvel's even cast the Fantastic Four, so how could they have cast the Fantastic Four and filmed this scene? Well, in January 2023, Ant-Man actually had a set of reshoots. And I, that's, that's crazy in itself, because Ant-Man is supposed to premiere on February 17th, hitting theaters worldwide, but they're having reshoots at the beginning of January, so what if Marvel secretly cast the Fantastic Four and then filmed this post credit scene? I know that sounds super far-fetched, but hell, this would be freaking crazy! This also explains where the Fantastic Four have been this entire time and why we haven't seen them or even heard of them in the MCU. We learned through Giant Man Dying and Ant-Man and the Wasp that if you're in the quantum realm for a long period of time, you can develop superpowers. So, with the Fantastic Four potentially having been in the quantum realm this entire time, what if this is how they got their powers? And we already know that in Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, we are going to meet more superpowered beings in the quantum realm. Empire Magazine released the first image of William Jackson Harper's character, Quas, who's apparently a freedom fighter and he's a telepath in the quantum realm. The Fantastic Four could have been a team of scientists from the 60s, 70s, 80s that mysteriously disappeared because they discovered the quantum realm and they got stuck inside it. Now this entire time they've developed these superpowers and now they're going to be teaming up with the Ant-Man family to try to escape. And there's not a better man in the Marvel Cinematic Universe than Reed Richards who's smart enough to be the one to finally help the Ant-Man family and themselves escape the quantum realm. If this were to happen, I think it would without a doubt be the biggest post credit scene in MCU history because not only is this movie a homecoming for Kang, who's the MCU's next big bad, but it's also the homecoming for Marvel's first family, the Fantastic Four. And if you want to start a face five with a bang, then that's it, my friends. I can't think of a bigger way to really kick off phase five then by introducing Kang and having him come in and make a statement and rev shop and curb stomp Ant-Man. And then to also introduce the Fantastic Four, who we're all extremely excited to finally see in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Only time will tell. We are so close to finally getting this movie. February 17th, my friends. Make sure to comment down below what you guys think of this theory. Like this video. Subscribe. Thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you guys next time.